What is up everybody? This is Michael V and this is another documentation of a 100% file for Mortal Kombat. This is obviously Mortal Kombat 9 and what we can see here is the achievements which is ultimately a representation of the 100% file because in order to get all the achievement you actually have to do literally everything in the game. Mortal Kombat 9 is both the most satisfying and gratifying Mortal Kombat experience I've ever had, and also one of the most grindy and unpleasant experiences I've ever had in any video game, period. Let's first talk about the positives. Mortal Kombat 9 is by far the Mortal Kombat that I have the most memories with. It's not that I've played the game more than any other, it is that the amount of ridiculousness in my life that surrounded this game is extraordinary. The Nexus was a group of people who would meet once a week in order to play Mortal Kombat. And whereas the cornerstones of this group was actually Mortal Kombat 4 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, all the rest of the bricks of the building were Mortal Kombat 9. Mortal Kombat 9 came out shortly after the Nexus was formed, and it originally went from a group of about three people to a group of about 20, 25 people who would meet every single week and play this game for hours. We were never super serious about the game. Some people took it more seriously than others, but it was always more of a group of friends getting together to play as opposed to a hardcore competition. However, this game did lead to us experiencing quite a bit of the more competitive and sportive side of the video game world, where we actually did go to some tournaments, we hosted some local tournaments, and even once or twice we would travel in order to compete. However, the primary goal of the Nexus was always to keep it chill, keep it playful, and never take the game too seriously. The... If I were to try to list every ridiculous memory that I've had while playing this game, uh, the video would probably be an hour or two long. But luckily, the vast majority of that is actually documented on this channel. So if you just scrub through the several hundreds of hours worth of footage, you can see a big chunk of that footage is just playing Mortal Kombat 9 with friends. Our favorite mode was actually the tag team mode, which they never brought back because NetherRealm said nobody played it. We did NetherRealm. We played the hell out of the tag team mode. We found tag team was one of the best options when you had a room filled with very skilled players and very, uh, not so skilled players because you could pair a highly skilled player up with a lower skilled player and then both of them would get to play with each other without having to directly compete and have the beginner get completely bodied by the more advanced person. Instead, the advanced person becomes a powerful ally in their quest to defeat somebody else. I find this is an outstanding game because of the tag team, it's an outstanding couples game that you and your wife or you and your girlfriend can actually sit down to a Mortal Kombat tower together and play through a tower together as opposed to competing against each other and one of you guys getting salty because the other one is just that damn good. This game is also one of the most frustrating games that I've ever experienced in terms of 100% completion. I would highly recommend playing through this game story mode, which is the one of the foundations for outstanding video games, uh, fighting game story modes, but I would highly discourage you from trying to do a 100% run on this game. There are a couple things on this game that are extremely fun to do. The crypt is outstanding to unlock. It's fairly satisfying. The actual content of the crypt isn't that amazing, but for its time, this crypt was a big step up visually and conceptually from the crypts that came before it. There's also the challenge tower where, with the exception of just one or two challenges, is really one of the meat of this game. It's absolutely outstanding to play through the challenge tower. The final challenge is for, I would say, intermediate to advanced players only. It is a very, very difficult challenge. Um, and then you have the story mode. And the story mode is just way too damn cool. Um, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe was the first Mortal Kombat to do a cinematic story, but the one that everyone remembers is Mortal Kombat 9. Whereas Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11 both have a better story mode than Mortal Kombat 9. Once again, Mortal Kombat 9 story mode is kind of the one that most people think of when they think of the Mortal Kombat story and when they think of cinematic storytelling within a fighting game. So where does this game suck? Where is it too rough? 
Well, like I said, there's that last challenge on the challenge tower, and it's absurdly difficult. And then there's Shao Kahn himself. There is a phrase that we use that we used to use in the Nexus, where if anyone said "fuck Shao Kahn," um, ultimately an eruption of everybody else would also join in with them saying, "Yeah, fuck Shao Kahn, fuck Shao Kahn." And it's basically the one-two punch of Shao Kahn in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, who is incredibly difficult to beat, and the story mode version of Shao Kahn in this game. Getting to the final tower, going through the towers and beating Shao Kahn, ultimately when you figure out how to beat Shao Kahn, it's not that difficult. But before you have figured out the strategy and the pattern that is required to beat Shao Kahn, he's undeniably one of the most frustrating bosses that have ever been in a fighting game, for sure. Um, but ultimately he is beatable, but he definitely will make you yell, fuck Shao Kahn. But it is in Necropolis, where we are right now, um, that is the most frustrating aspect of this game. If you want to do 100% completion, you have to achieve full mastery over every one of the characters. As you saw as I was clicking through, each character has a certain amount of hallmarks that you have to get to in order to achieve mastery. These are things like performing so many fatalities and having so many hours put into each character. Um, but ultimately, if you want to maximize your, I guess, opportunity or maximize how quickly you do this, it's going to involve you doing a lot of very passive and repetitive tasks that, uh, yeah, eventually become really boring. But yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, playing the hell out of Mortal Kombat 9. It's one of the best experiences I've ever had. It's a 10 out of 10 game, definitely in my top three or top four favorite uh, Mortal Kombat games. Because of its tag team function and its relatively easy to pick up fighting engine, this is on my list of Mortal Kombat to introduce new players to fighting games. So if you know someone who's never played fighting games but they're interested in getting into them, this is a phenomenal starting point because it has all the depth they need to dig deep if they want to, but the game is definitely easy enough to initially just hop into the game and enjoy it, I guess. Um, it's pretty easy to pick up, and I think that makes it good. Plus, that tag team mode makes it really fair for new people to play with advanced people because you guys can just team up, and you can co-op a tower together, and I think that's outstanding. So Mortal Kombat 9, like I said, there's no way I could list every single outstanding memory I have with this game, but needless to say, it is one of the best experiences I've ever had in a video game, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.